Welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping back into the CJ4 here at CYOW. And we're going to take the radio panel and get it set up and configured for working with the working title CJ4. That includes repurposing things like the nav radio knobs. Since we can't control the nav radios in the CJ4, we might as well use those to control the PFD knobs and even the lower panel knobs for things like the lower menus and charts. Especially since when you're not in the new lock interaction system, you can't use the, uh, the nub to move around the charts. All right, let's jump into the jet and get going. As always, we've gone ahead, we've already published this snippet. So if what you're looking to do is just download this same radio panel, all you got to do is select your radio panel, click on something to get these buttons to enable. So click on any button, any knob, either top or lower, doesn't matter. Go on over to online snippets. When you're inside of online snippets, you want to go to radio panel, make sure you go to complete device. Uh, we really only care about the CJ4 for this because there's things that are specific to it. So go ahead, look for Les O'Reilly, and you're looking for the Microsoft Flight Sim working title CJ4 version 0.12.7 radio panel. Go ahead, grab that, and replace everything. So now that you've replaced everything, we are good to go. Don't forget, most of my devices do support virtual panel. So in this case, it's checking that the avionics master switch is set to one. If you want to use a different value, go ahead. But a lot of times when people are like the displays don't light up, uh, that's because your panel is looking for something here under the power. Let's get into the configuration. Now, if you're going to be moving back and forth, one of the things I like to do is quickly come in, go to the rename devices you'll notice that I leave sort order one open as much as possible. That way, if I come to the radio panel and I, for the temporary purposes, change this to sort number one, it's going to go ahead and stick it at the top. That way, if we go out, come back, uh, it will reset it to the top for us. Now, one of the things I was talking about at the opening of the video was the fact that we can't drive the nav radios and you go to the event monitor and you hit the start, you're going to see that the CJ4 spams a lot of data. So let's go ahead or events. Let's go ahead and hit the stop key and you'll see that it's forcing the nav calm uh, audio panel receive selects. We'll get into that in another video when we're doing the Garmin GMA audio panel. It's going to set the panel lights always to one, which is helpful because then when you turn the dimming knob for the panel, uh, it doesn't have that set to zero and you spinning the knob. It sends it basically every second. Then you've got the light potentiometer three set um, and that's actually coming from that dimming panel knob. Then you've got the fuel selectors constantly being set. It seems strange that it's sending that K event every second, but it is. Then the other two things it's always sending is setting the radio uh, navigation. This is why we say there's nothing we can do with the nav pages on the radio panel. Uh, even when you have it set to manual tuning, the CJ4 uh, mod is going to overwrite this value. So the moment you change it, it's going to change it right back and it will not allow you to keep it. Since we know that's what the data is going to do, then let's repurpose it. When you look at the radios, you're going to find out that I've got a pretty standard configuration I use for these. Display on the right is going to be the standby frequency. Display on the left is going to be the active frequency. But we have different modes for them. And that's going to be which digits we cut off uh, because there's only five digits on the real panel. If we are doing the small spacing, so the 8.33 kilohertz spacing, so moving by 0 0.005, we kind of want to be able to see all that. But if we're flying where we only need the 25 kilohertz spacing, I do have the event set up. So as long as both of these selectors are set to COM1, if you hold down 
that top button for long press, so for longer than one second, it's going to check that the lower device selector is also on COM1. Uh, if those two things are together, when you hold it down, it's going to change it into the 0.25 spacing. And then what you're going to find happens, so we're cutting off the right digit, the rightmost digit, and that way what we see is 124.25. We don't need the to see the last digit. When we're in 8.33 kilohertz spacing, then what we want to see uh, is all three digits to the right because it's always a one on the left. Otherwise, what we've always got happening is the short press. Your short press is always going to be the calm frequency uh, swap. So transmit select. Uh, if it's not equal to one, this normally would toggle the transmit select. So this way you can flip back and forth uh, between the comms. You'll see the same thing on comm two. The long press is uh, going to change the comm transmit select. So what you could see in the sim over here is your transmit selector. So if we hold down the comm two swap, you'll see that it flips it to COM2. And so now that we are not on COM1 selector on the bottom, on that top knob, we now have a long press, which will swap the COM1 selector. So if we hold it down on COM1, it switches over. So when we we're talking about this button here, right? It has two functions for that long press. That long press, as long as the bottom selector is not on COM1, the long press is just going to switch us. So we'll switch to COM2. You see the light down here. Switch to COM2 is the transmitter. So now uh, this guy right here changed to COM2 as the, as the transmitter. So now we hold down COM 1's button for a long press. So you see me holding it down. And now you see it switches to COM 1. Whereas if we had have had it on COM 1 for the lower selector, then the long press now when being held is so that we can switch in and out of 0.25 or 8.33 kilohertz spacing. You're only going to set up that uh, spacing once, kind of at the beginning of the flight. Uh, and w other than that, you're not really going to have the two COM radios set to the same one. Like, I'm not going to have the top row to COM one and the lower one. So that's why we kind of put that little special event. Going to COM two, you're going to see the same identical events. Same events. Uh, same information, same right digits uh, being cut off. So basically all I did was I went to COM1, copy, pasted, and then changed everything from COM1 to COM2. So you've got that spacing mode switch. And then when the lower panel does not equal COM2, it's going to send the transmit select to switch between COM1 or COM2 as you're transmitting COM. And then, of course, no matter what, if you just tap the button, it's going to give you this the radio swap, which will transfer your standby into your active. Now where it starts to get pretty interesting is when we move to the nav radios. We can't control the nav radios because the CJ4 mod is constantly writing the value. So you have to do that through the FMS CDU in, in the cockpit. So we can still leave the frequencies. That way you can switch to the nav. You can see that the frequency, what's dialed in without having to go into the panel. Uh, that's nice. But what we've done now is on the top row, nav one, we're gonna repurpose the knob and the button. So the tuner inner, so the small knob, that is going to do the data upper um, knob. Um, so that's the middle knob, which we'll show you in a second. The outer knob is going to go to the menu advanced, increase and decrease. And then what you're going to have is the 
button pressed, so the button on the right pressed for a short time, is going to be the same as pushing the knob. The middle button is a, on the knob is a button. And if you hold it for a long time, we'll trigger the PFD menu. So this is going to give us some control over the PFD that we previously didn't have. It's going to control this knob in the UI. And like we said, the button, if we hold it down for a long press, that will bring up the menu. So now my outer knob scrolls through the menu. So it's like the outer knob in the middle. And then you can use the inner knob for changing the data. And for a menu, you would click on the knob. So we want to go into config. I would tap the button. So now I could change between inches, FPA, right? And if I hold it down, it's like pressing the PFD menu, which will back it up. And if I hold it down, it will go all the way out. So that's pretty cool. That's what we're using that knob for. When we switch to nav two, you'll see we still put the nav two frequencies so we can monitor those. And now we're switching over to the next knob to the right. The inner, we're going to the range increase and decrease because that's the inner knob on the PFD control panel. Then the outer knob, we're actually going to use the same menu advance increase and decrease. The only reason I did this was because I copied and pasted from nav one and then changed the events. There's no tilt yet. So I just left the menu advance increase decrease. You could use this and repurpose it to say the barrel. I have other controls for the barrel. So I didn't think of doing that. When you press the button for a short period of time, it will push the weather and terrain button. So again, there's no push for tilt. So I was like, let's use the uh, weather and terrain button. So you can do that. When you hold it for a long press, it will press the traffic button. On the lower panel for nav one, we went ahead and we remapped to the lower panel. So that would be the section right below the MFD. And this gives us access to the lower data. So this is going to be the dual concentric knob that's on the lower panel. Uh, the inner one is the one labeled data. The outer is the one labeled menu ADV advanced. I don't know. Uh, and then you've got the data push because there is a short press. And it also we decided instead of going for the long press with the hold, um, I wanted to actually get access to the lower menu button because I found that that becomes very useful. So you can see we're on that lower menu. Uh, we're looking at these buttons. So if we hold that lower button down now for longer than a second, it brings up that lower menu. The outer knob now turns between things. Uh, press it is like pushing the knobs. So there we've gone into plan mode. Now we can go into PPOS mode. Uh, we can come down to our map symbols, click on it. And of course we could come in and we could check off the symbols that we want to show. Hold it down and it presses the lower menu, it backs up, hold it down again, and eventually we'll get out. So that works very well. On the lower row of the radio, when we set the knob selector to nav two, now what we're gonna do is still show you nav two frequencies, but we're going to reassociate the dual concentric knob with the joystick. So for the inner, we're making this map to the down and up events. And for the outer, we're going to map this to the right and left events. When you press it for a short time, this is like pressing the chart button. And if you press it for an extended or long period of time, this will give you the escape button. So we're talking about now on the nav two selector, if I press that button, a single press, now it brings up our chart. And since we've got our approach loaded in, we can see our carp airport and we can scroll through the chart. And if we press it again, it of course toggles off the chart mode. Now, 
if we were in the chart and we go back to nav one position now when we hold that button it presses the lower menu so now we can go ahead and we can go to our departure select it by pressing the button once and of course now we can select our Ottawa 4 departure so now we see the Ottawa 4 departure and of course we can switch back to nav 2 so that we've got the ability in our knob to scroll the joystick that we can't even press so as you can see we can't even press this joystick right so that's pretty awesome great use to repurpose those knobs and to the joysticks and the other knobs so we've now got this knob the lower menu we've got the escape button we've got the joystick we've got the chart button uh, and we have the push select button when you go to the ADF we are controlling the ADF inner knob is changing the digit the outer knob will scroll between the digits allowing us to dial in whatever frequency we need in the ADF and this is updating the sim uh, they don't overwrite the ADF so you have the ability to do that and that's the same for both the top and the bottom both will control it the same way going to the DMEs so in the upper DME currently that's where I had gone and built my top of descent pause so this allows me to turn on a pause flag so effectively what I'm doing is I can pick the number of minutes out from destination that I want to pause my sim and I can enable the pause flag so the purpose of enabling it is so that I can turn it on and turn it off uh, so that it just pauses the one time then on the bottom that is running the actual DME so if I want to see nav 1 and nav 2 DMEs I can see them you'll notice we haven't assigned anything to this uh, to this knob so that's available to you to go ahead and map it to other functions in the sim and then in both the top and the bottom controlling the transponder as well as the transponder state so the outer state when it's on 3 that's mode C 4 that's your auto mode if we go to our tuner if we go down here to this section you'll see that as we change the values just like we normally would they do update in the sim so that's good you'll notice over here the TARA so if we set this down to 1 you'll notice this doesn't update the data has changed so inside of vpilot you would see that the mode C is off if we come back to it you'll notice whenever it refreshes this page it will update so if we go ahead and set that to mode 4 you'll see this doesn't update but if we jump down to IDX come back you will see that it goes on and of course if we toggle the line select key you'll see it toggle the actual sim data between 1 and 4 so that's also why it's working inside of vpilot that's all we're going to do today i think that solves everything we need for now grab this from the online snippets throw it into your radio panel and maybe tweak some things if you haven't already please hit that like button if you like this content go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of that maybe ring the bell either way as always guys Thanks for watching. Have a great day.